Hey everyone, so this is the screencast for uh, chapter 11, section 3 of your book. Uh, the subject is DNA replication. So now that we know a little bit about the structure of DNA, we're going to consider some of the functions of DNA. Uh, there's really two main functions of DNA. Uh, the first one we'll talk about here, you've already been introduced to this uh, function of DNA. DNA serves as a template or as a uh, a model to duplicate itself. Okay, so you've already you've already seen this in uh, the cell cycle that DNA needs to be replicated if you're going to duplicate and divide a cell. So in S phase of interphase, when we say that the genetic material is duplicated, this is uh, where DNA is duplicated, right? So we're going to learn the process today of how the duplication occurs. Essentially, you have the double-stranded helix that is unwound and that, that basically that DNA ladder is separated and each strand is used as a template to create another additional strand. So you get one strand, you start with one strand of DNA and you create an entirely new DNA molecule. Okay, so you, you start with a molecule of DNA, it has two strands and each of those strands are used as a template to copy that DNA. So that's what we'll talk about in this screencast. Uh, in a future screencast, when we talk about uh, the role, the other role of DNA, which is actually 11.4, we'll talk about the role of DNA in gene expression. Okay, but for today, uh, for, for right now, we're just going to talk about duplicating DNA. Okay, so making DNA from DNA. So what is a template? A template is basically something that you work off of to make a copy of something. So uh, let's say, for example, if you were copying uh, text from a, a textbook, right? You would use your book as a template and you would type out the exact words in that book word for word. Uh, so that would be a template, basically. When is this useful? Well, we just talked about that. Literally, DNA duplication occurs in S phase of interphase, which we saw when we were talking about uh, the cell cycle. Okay, what does this look like? Well, again, we're going to start with a DNA double helix shown here. So this is the parental DNA molecule here. It's double-stranded. We have this one strand on this side and this strand on this side, making it double-stranded. Uh, in order to duplicate this genetic material, what you have to do is essentially uh, uncouple or detach this uh, double-stranded molecule. Remember, Oops, there are hydrogen bonds occurring between the two strands. So, for example, if you have GAGA -G -A here, you know, on the other side you have CTGT. Uh, -T -T. And there would be three hydrogen bonds here, two here, three here, and two here. Essentially, what you'd have to do is uncouple these hydrogen bonds which is relatively easy, remember, because hydrogen bonds are not too, too strong. You need to basically uncouple these bonds. You need to erase that and separate these two strands. Okay? So I've simulated that over here. Uh, let's say, for example, this is your double-stranded DNA molecule shown here. Essentially, what you need to do is separate these two strands like I've done here. So let's say, for instance, you take this strand over here and you bring this other strand over here. Okay, now we separated those two strands. Now what do we have to do? Well, you have to complementary base pair. We all know how to complementary base pair. Basically, C's go with G's, T's go with A's. So you fill that back in. Same thing over here for the other strand, except it's opposite. If you want to get really technical, you can actually fill in the hydrogen bonds, which I'm going to do here. Same over here. Now look, from having one strand, uh, one molecule of DNA that's double-stranded, 
we've duplicated our DNA to have two separate molecules. This is one molecule over here, double-stranded, and another molecule over here that's double-stranded. Okay, Just by basically separating that initial parental strand and then filling in uh, with complementary base pairing. So a little bit of the logistics for, for doing this. Obviously, if you have uh, a DNA molecule shown up here and you want to uh, duplicate it, you would basically need to separate this double strand. So you see you have one strand here and two here, but it's, it's a double helix that's bound together by hydrogen bonds, so you need to uncouple them. Sort of like prying open prison bars, right? So if this is one prison bar, and this is one prison bar, basically you need to sort of pry open to have access to that DNA. When you pry open those uh, DNA strands, basically you're going to create what's called a replication bubble. So you see this original blue strand here has been pried open from this strand here, this original blue strand here, creating a replication bubble. Now you can go in and complementary base pair with that, uh, that, that blue strand. And that's symbolized here as this yellow strand. So those are those new DNA nucleotides being added based on complementary base pairing. In the end, once this is complete, you're going to have two new daughter strands, two new daughter molecules uh, of DNA. So you're going to have um, this daughter molecule here, this daughter molecule here. Remember, the original strands were these two blue ones, and essentially we've made two new complementary strands shown here in yellow to make two whole DNA molecules. So. Uh, that's that's the logistics of that. Now let's practice this a little bit since we have a few more minutes. So DNA is double stranded. I will always, when we're doing DNA uh, duplication, show you that it's two strands basically. So this would be the one strand of this DNA molecule. This would be the second strand of this DNA molecule, okay? So let's make sure that our sequence is basically paired up right. A is always with T's, T's always with A's, C's always with G's, and G's always with C's. So this matches up, this matches up, this matches up, so on and so forth. That looks pretty right to me. Okay. So this looks pretty right. Let's just go ahead and proceed. Now basically I'd have to separate the strands here, so basically get rid of the hydrogen bonds that occur between here. And let's say that I just did that. Now, for a, a DNA molecule like this, probably the easiest way to show complementary base pairing is to just put the complementary base pair on that side and the complementary base pair on this side. So let me show what I mean. With this A, I'd match a T. With this A, I'd match a T. With this T, I'd match an A. And this C gets a G, this G gets a C, and so on and so forth for the whole DNA molecule. Okay, The other strand also gets complementary base pairing, so this T would get an A. Just like that, all the way through the molecule, so that basically in the end, after, after you complementary base pair, this would now be an entire new molecule. And this would be an entire new, new molecule. Okay, so you've taken that one DNA molecule that was originally this black text, and after separating it and complementary base pairing it, you would have two completely, uh, you'd have two new D, uh, DNA molecules both of the same sequence, remember, because you're using this template, you'd have the same sequence. It would just give you two molecules now instead of just one. So we'll practice this again in class. Hopefully this helped. Uh, just keep practicing it, uh, and it'll come to you. Okay, take care.